Hello and welcome Horror Diaries Official. Today, the story is based on a true event. The title of the story is Cloudy. Cloudy is a true ghost story about a haunted creek in Michigan and a young Native American man who told stories warning of a terrible creature that would rise from the murky waters and drag men to their deaths. There was a young Native American man named William Cloud who left his tribe to work with the white men. He got a job as a lumberjack in Alga, Michigan and worked on a long chute at a creek a mile and a half outside the village. After chopping down some trees, the lumberjacks would load the logs onto a raft and float it down the creek. They stopped at a log chewed which had a huge heavy gate that would hold the logs back until it was time to send them through. The work was tough but he was glad to learn a decent wage. The other lumberjacks called him Cloudy and he was a quiet fellow. The only time he ever spoke was when they asked him to tell them scary Indian legends and ghost stories. One story that Cloudy often told was about a ghostly wraith that haunted the creek. The old ones tell tales of an evil creature that preys on humans. He would say, they call it the wraith, and they say it looks in the creek. It has horns like a devil, and white scales all over its body. At midnight, when the spirits roam freely, it rises out of the murky waters and waits for a fresh victim. If you stray into its clutches, it will pounce and wrap its long arms around you. Then with its fearsome claws it tears you into pieces and pulls you down into the depths of the creek. <coughs> that spring the rains were heavy and the creek had swelled to its highest point. It was on a cold April night that the lumberjacks caught the order to lower the gate and send the logs through. It was pitch dark outside and the rain was falling in sheets. None of the lumberjacks wanted to venture out in the storm, so they agreed to draw lots to see who would have to do the job. As it happened, Cloudy drew the short straw. Without a word of a complaint, he opened the door and set out into the storm. He made his way silently to the log, chewed and disappeared into the, light, into the night. An hour went by as the man waited in the warmth of the cabin for Cloudy to return. They began to wonder where he was and joked that perhaps the wraith had got him. As time went on, the jocks stopped and the men began to get worried. Eventually, the men decided to go down to the creek and look for him. They made their way through the pitch black and the pouring rain with only a lantern to guide their way. Finally, they came to the log chute and one of the men lowered the lantern and peered into the creek's murky depths. Suddenly, he cried out he had spotted something floating in the water. It was the mangled body of Cloudy. The lumberjacks lifted the gate and used poles to pull Cloudy's cups out of the creek. 
He had been cut to ribbons and his head was only hanging on by a thread. The next morning, news of the murderous wraith in the creek quickly spread through the lumber camp. The men were all terrified and before long, many were packing their belongings and leaving the camp for good. They buried Cloudy near the creek and put a small marker above his grave. By sundown, the camp was completely deserted. They say the wrath still looks in the creek, waiting for another victim to stumble into, into its clutches. However, it was probably never get its claws on another victim because according to the legend, the ghost of Cloudy haunts the banks of the creek, appearing to anyone foolish enough to wander near the edge and burn them away with terrible groans and piercing screams. seeing other girls. George wasn't of very sensitive and bluntly dumped her. Rachel's heart was broken and she felt like she could never love again. She fell into a deep dark spiral of sadness and depression. Within weeks her uncontrollable grief made her sick. She came down with a fever and her body grew weaker and weaker. She had lost the will to live. One day she called George to her bedside and asked him to lean in close. Then she whispered in his ear, I realize I can never have you in this world, she said, but I shall claim you in the next. The next day Rachel died. She was buried in the little graveyard and George tried to put her out of his thoughts and go on about his life. Almost a year later, George Deans was wandering home from a Christmas party tipsy with drink. His road took him past the graveyard where Rajin was buried. As he walked, he saw a strange folk like mist rising out of the cemetery, it came floating towards him over the headstones and gradually formed into the ghostly figure of a woman. George started shaking and staggered backward as he recognized 
to Rachel's face. He was so frightened that he was unable to run as the ghostly apparition came closer and closer. Suddenly it reached out and grabbed his hand. Its touch was icy cold, colder than death. Then in an instant the apparition vanished. George was found wandering aimlessly down the road. He seemed to be in a daze, and his night, his right hand hung limp by his side. He was frozen solid. From then on, he suffered from an excruciating pain in the hand the ghost had touched. Within days, his hand began to wither and shrivel, shrivel up. Eventually, it dangled uselessly at his side. Jardines never married and spent the rest of his life alone. When he died, he was buried in the same cemetery as Rachel Vincent. In his will, he had left instructions for the ghostly image to be chiseled on the tombstone above his name. Two hands eternally clasped in an ice-cold handshake.